Last week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we explored beautiful Lagos. We also had a chance to celebrate not only the end of our Atlantic crossing with the Arc Europe, but also my birthday. Well, after a week of rest and recuperation in Lagos, uh, it's time for us to leave. We had a really good week, uh, did a lot of high quality eating and drinking. And now we are heading off, I'm sure as Teresa was saying, to one of our favorite, favorite anchorages. I think if I had to compile a list of our top 10 anchorages, it would be Alvor Lagoon. Um, the passage is a heady two and a half nautical miles from Lagos. So um, after doing almost 4,000, this should be all right. We should be all right, no more watch keeping. Alvor Lagoon is, um, exactly what it says it's like a little inland sea it's tiny we have we're in a situation now where we have been away from home or family for about four or five months and it is time to go and see them so we have a couple of weeks just to kill and we figured that well you know what we've done a fair bit of sailing this season we're going to go and anchor and just enjoy the beauty of Portugal. This is such a nice change from the Atlantic swell that we we're getting every single time we went anywhere in the Caribbean. It's just really easy sailing or in our case motoring because there's not much wind today and we're only going a few miles anyway. But I just can't put into words how pleased we are to be back in Europe. The Caribbean and the Bahamas and the States were wonderful um, but you know I think that Nick and I are the type of people that we, we really need a change of scene every now and again and uh, to have such a different type of cruising ground is really exciting to us now. I know I say this about many countries that I visit, but I do love Portugal. I think Portugal is a fantastic country. It has a rich and vibrant history. Hang on a second. Lob lobster pot. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, the ubiquitous lobster pot that uh, I, I almost hit. Well done to my little uh, navigator. I'm not sure if it's possible to come to Alvor and not run aground, but we've already almost run aground and we've only really just uh, made it into the entrance. I can actually feel the keel dragging along the sand right now. It doesn't help that the sandbanks shift a lot, so the charts aren't reliable, and it would appear that uh, they don't change the buoys very often either because um, the buoys don't seem to be showing us where the channel is. So. And now the sun's gone behind the clouds, so what little eyeball navigation is possible with the uh, murky water is now even more difficult. But there's a load of boats over there at anchor, so it's obviously possible to find a way in. Um, so we should be all right. We've been here before, and we did anchor closer to town, so we know we can make it in. As I said to, uh, earlier today, this is one of probably my top 10 anchorages. Mm. I love it here. We came here, what, three years ago now? Mm. It's like a little inland lake, isn't it? An inland river with a lagoon at the end of it. It's, I don't know, it's beautiful. It's flat, calm. There's a lovely village at the end of the lagoon. There's a good supermarket. You know, we're in two meters of water. Um, and because we're in Portugal now, not the Caribbean or the Bahamas, we have a, an abundance of food. So we've got the barbecue going. We are going to have a barbecue for dinner. We are going to have a glass of wine and have a few beers. 
the only blip on the horizon is that the outboard packed up um, and I've had to order a part for it so hopefully I can epoxy the broken bit together but if I can't then we'll be rowing for a few days <laughs> we need the exercise after six weeks of uh, sailing across an ocean yourself I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Good morning. Today we are in Alvor and we're just about to head off into the little village. Our mission is to go and get a really nice breakfast. There's a place that I read about um, that we're going to try out, hopefully. Then we're going to go to the supermarket and buy some provisions, uh, something for lunch, something for dinner. And oh, we need to take the rubbish out. The gash bag. The gash bag. Yes, the rubbish bag is called a gash bag. That doesn't sound good. And we're also going to explore Alvor uh, a little bit. So, yeah, we've been here before, but we didn't really explore it extensively last time. So I'm looking forward to checking it out. We're in a really lovely anchorage. So, yeah, I reckon that we'll be here for at least a few more days, if not longer. Um, at the moment, life is good. That sounds healthier than it did before. Yeah. Well, first time we've had this boat, the dinghy moving since uh, last time we got this boat. Oh my god, look at the house. It's just gone. It's just gone. Because last time we got this boat, we were going to uh, Firefly oh, in Marsh Harbour. That's I miss Marsh. Firefly. Although we are eating extremely well here in Europe, so I'm kind of okay. Where did the other dinghy go? to breakfast at an Irish cafe place. Which is what you do when you get to Portugal. Obviously, it's yes. It's an Irish cafe. I know. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. And it was only 13 euros for two massive kind of fry up breakfast things and orange juice, orange juice tea, and tea. Yeah. So, so cheap. <laughs> so uh, we've just been to the supermarket again, cheap and awesome. And we are heading back to the boat. For what are we doing? You have jobs to do today. Uh, we have to. Tell you what we got to do this one. We need to get our sails, our red coloured sails up. We have Code Zero and Parasailer that spent the best part of six weeks getting waves over the deck and getting absolutely soaked. So before they get stowed, um, we need to dry them out, which means putting them up. In, and snuffed, snuffed and furled, and just letting them just letting them dry out. Otherwise, they'll get mouldy. I'm gonna do a workout, and then I'm gonna do some editing. Um, I think, well, the area that we're in and the light that we have lends itself to like videography. I mean, this is kind of like it's like shabby logging aside. <laughs> yeah, get on with our day, I guess. Now that we're all fed and uh, have oh, it's like a nice cafe as well, and have um, done at least some of our chores for this morning. Yep. Head back to the boat and get on with it.
in a somewhat surprising turn of events, we are having curry for dinner, which I wasn't quite expecting, but I'm okay with. But we went and sat down at a lovely Portuguese restaurant and we looked at the menu and the fish was $48 a kilo, which is kind of expensive when you can A, catch fish, or B, buy fish quite inexpensively at the supermarket. So we decided not to pay that and uh, come for curry instead. We haven't had a curry for how many years? Yeah, I don't know, I'm feeling like curry and I feel kind of bad because we've not- Hang on, apart from my delicious curry, mid Yeah, Atlantic. apart from the curry that Nick obviously cooked in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, which was delicious. very, very excellent. Um, yeah, it's been a while since we've had curry, so we had a craving, but we have been trying to eat Portuguese, but I feel like every time we go out for Portuguese, it's like, oh, but look, I feel like fish and chips. And, oh, but hang on a second, I, I quite fancy like Spanish tapas. And in this case, oh, but I, I wouldn't mind the curry. So I feel like we've kind of been failing at eating Portuguese while we've been here, with the obvious exception of pastel de natas, which we've been scoffing like there's no tomorrow. And we've been eating lots of the Portuguese uh, barbecued chicken. And? Rather than filming amazing light that we've got here, the sunset, kind of dappled with charcoal smoke from the many barbecues, we're eating curry. <laughs> but the light is amazing. Well, we've had a lovely evening. We have had a lovely, lovely evening. I am four drinks down. Oh, more than that, my love. Seven drinks down. <laughs> anyway, well, what we're doing, we've had a lovely evening. We went for a curry. We had, um, what do yeah, we have? I remember, do you? We had some beers, curry, and then I wanted to do some time-lapse photography of the sunset, which meant I had a brandy. <laughs> that hasn't even kicked in yet. So, um, better get back you to the... about the port that you've downed? Oh you shit, think? yeah. Okay, we, we better get back to the boat before the brandy kicks in and I'm like zigzagging all over the... Now, lucky for you, I do know how to drive a... <clears throat> and we watched a couple having a f***ing meltdown next to us on the table. Yeah, that was a bit sad, actually. I feel like they were very unhappy. Well, although that we do end up, I mean, as, as every peep, as everyone does. Every people. <laughs> every people does. No, but you end up, if you live a life where you live in restaurants or you go to bars and other things, you end up in a situation where you end, you do end up listening to other people's conversations. I think you use the phrase end up like at end least up. 20 times. I end up, end up, end up. And if I'd had one more drink, I'd have told them just to split up and give up because they were quite clearly just tearing each other apart. And this is their holiday. Yeah, exactly. It's just their bloody holiday. They're meant to be happy. Yeah. Imagine when they're back at like wherever they're from doing their stuff. Well, he was uh, from the north of England, I think. Well, Definitely north, rising. south, east, west doesn't make any difference. You know, they are obviously in a relationship that was just dysfunctional. I was trying to make you walk backwards until you got to the ramp to see just how aware of your surroundings you were. But that failed. <clears throat> Nice evening. Next week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we continue to enjoy this incredible anchorage on the Portuguese Algarve.